Today, we examine one of the most imaginative and creative opening tricks in chess, namely a courageous pawn sacrifice to seize the initiative and ideally to keep the enemy king in the center of the board. This bold strategy often leads to a devastating attack that can crush the opponent before he even gets a chance to consolidate. This was one of Alexander Alekhin's favorite tricks and he executed it brilliantly in many of his games. The game we are about to analyze illustrates this concept at its best. Alechen starts with d4, his opponent Klaus Junger plays d5, and after c4, e6, knight f3 and knight f6, Alechen plays g3, transposing into the Catalan opening. The idea is to fianche to the bishop and put pressure on black's queenside. Black captures on c4 and in order to get his pawn back, Alechen uh, gives a check from a4, also targeting the pawn. After knight d7, before capturing on c4, Alechen fianchettos his bishop. Black plays a6, now he is ready to play b5, defending the pawn, that's why Alechen captures on c4, and b5, vacating the b7 square for the bishop in order to challenge white's light squared bishop on the long diagonal. Now, before retreating the queen to c2, Alechen moves his queen to c6 first. The idea is to attack the rook and induce black to move the rook away from the a-file. And that's exactly what black does. He plays rook b8. And now, after Alechen plays, will play uh, a4 and exchange on b5, his rook will occupy the... Uh, this uh, important file and the black rook isn't on a8 anymore. So the white rook will dominate this file. Alechen castles uh, and black of course plays bishop b7 with a tempo, kicking out the queen. And only now the queen retreats to c2. And black immediately attacks white's pawn center by playing c5, also creating a possible threat. The pawn is attacking the d4 pawn and the only defender of the d4 pawn is the white knight, so black might think about capturing this knight next move, after which his c5 pawn will capture on d4 and black would win a valuable pawn. But instead of uh, defending his pawn, Alechen now begins to execute his favorite trick. While the white king has already castled, the black king is still in the center, and in order to exploit this, white must play energetically. So, Alechen sacrifices the pawn and uh, increases the dynamism of his position. So, he activates his rook without even moving it. He plays a4. Of course, black could have declined the sacrifice by playing either b4 or rook c8, but as central pawns are valuable, black decided to accept the challenge. So he gives the bishop pair up by exchanging on f3, and after bishop takes f3, he captures on d4, winning a valuable central pawn. And after the exchange on b5, we can look at the result. White has the advantage of two bishops and the open file for his rook. Without making a single move, his rook is now can be considered a developed piece. While black in his turn has an extra pawn and a very important pawn, a central pawn which restricts white's position and puts pressure on white. Alechen develops the rook now, attacking black's pawn and creating an unpleasant x-ray on the d-file. So uh, black must do something about the defense of his d4 pawn. And there are different ways of defending this pawn. The first move that comes to mind, the most natural looking move, as the black king is still in the center, would have been bishop c5, developing the bishop, defending the pawn and opening the king's way to the king's side. However, bishop c5 would have been a mistake, because it turns out that the bishop isn't sufficiently defended on c5. It's defended only by the knight, and the white queen is targeting this bishop, so white can develop his bishop with a tempo, attacking the rook, and it turns out that black cannot play e5, because in this case the knight would be overworked. It cannot defend both the bishop and the pawn, so white would capture on e5, and after the knight captures, the bishop would be 
undefended, so white would capture on uh, c5, getting the pawn back, re-establishing the material balance, and preventing black from castling, and the knight would be under attack, the pawn would be under attack, and uh, black's position would collapse. Or, after uh, bishop c5 and bishop f4, if instead of e5, uh, black plays rook c8, which at first sight might look dangerous for white, as black creates an unpleasant x-ray this time, white can play bishop b7, attacking the rook, and the rook doesn't have any squares to move, so white is winning the exchange. So, um, bishop c5 doesn't work. Another move that comes to mind is e5, which is perfectly playable, actually. But in this case, white can continue his struggle for the initiative by playing e3, again threatening to capture on d4 and get his pawn back, and also opening the d-file, which can be really dangerous for black, so black must play uh, carefully in this case. For example, he cannot capture on e3 in order to retain his extra pawn. Because that would be catastrophically, um, that would catastrophically weaken the d file. The d file would open, and after bishop takes e3, white's initiative uh, would have increased to a great level. And black must think about uh, castling. He can play bishop e7, but uh, after bishop c6, white would pin the knight, attacking it for the second time, and after black castles and unpins his knight, it doesn't help, because after bishop takes, knight takes, the knight is pinned, and white can attack it for the second time, and there is no way black can save the piece. So, instead of e5, as the x-ray is really annoying, black decided to play queen b6 defending the pawn with the queen and moving away from this x-ray. Alekhin develops the knight, preparing knight b3, which would attack the d4 pawn for the second time. That's why in the anticipation of knight b3, black reinforces his d4 pawn by playing e5, and knight b3 follows, opening the bishop's diagonal, and now white is ready to play e3, which again would target the d4 pawn. And now it was time for black to think about castling, finally. So it was time to return the extra pawn by playing bishop e7. So black is ready to castle. White, of course, would play e3, followed by uh, e takes d, getting the pawn back, after which white would have only a slight advantage. And of course, black shouldn't think about retaining his pawn by capturing on e3, because, again, after bishop takes e3, with a tempo, white's initiative would have increased. But instead of bishop e7, black decided to simplify the position. Indeed, he is up a pawn, and when you are up in material, exchanging pieces is usually a good idea. So, black played knight c5, offering the exchange of the knights, and also preventing the intended e3. It turns out that now if white plays e3, black would simply exchange the knights, and after queen takes b3, as the white knight, which controlled the c5 square, has disappeared from the board, black would have developed his bishop, reinforcing the pawn, and next move black would castle and white wouldn't have any advantage. So, after black played knight c5, e3 doesn't work, and instead of e3, so Alekhin's position looks passive, black looks better, and besides that, Alekhin makes a move which at first sight doesn't make any sense. He exchanges the knights himself, he captures on c5, simplifying the position and also letting his opponent develop his bishop reinforcing his central pawn, preventing e3 once and for all. Now Alekhin won't be able to play e3 because black has the total uh, control over this important diagonal. And besides that, so black uh, keeps his extra pawn. Besides that, black is ready to castle. And if he succeeds in doing so, he would be better. 
So at first sight Alekhin's play doesn't make any sense. But actually, he had a brilliant idea in mind. And now you can pause the video and try to find it. What to do? Black needs only one move to castle. After sacrificing a pawn, in order to keep the black king in the center, Alechen sacrifices the exchange. Now the open A file tells. So the rook makes its first move, and what a move! Rook A6 sacrificing itself. Black has no choice, he must capture the rook. And the idea was to deflect the black queen from B6, and now the bishop isn't defended. So White captures the bishop, so Alechen sacrifices the exchange, but his queen is preventing the black king from castling. Besides that, the e5 pawn is under attack. So not only Alechen prevented the black king from castling, but also, as black cannot castle, his rook is out of play. So although from purely mat uh, materialistic point of view, black is up the exchange and a pawn, but from the dynamic point of view, uh, we can even say that while black uh, hasn't castled yet, white has the advantage, material advantage. Besides that, black must do something about the e5 pawn. White is threatening to capture it and not only the pawn, also the rook would fall under attack after. Knight d7, which looks natural, doesn't work, which def would have defended the pawn and attacked the queen, but it doesn't work because of bishop c6 which would pin the knight, renewing the threat of queen takes e5 check. And uh, f6 doesn't work because of queen d6 with terrible threats, such as bishop takes d7 check, followed by queen takes a6 and black would lose the queen, or uh, white is uh, sim uh, simply threatening to capture on d7 with the queen, or to capture the rook, as the rook isn't actually defended by the knight, as the knight is pinned. So. Uh, after uh, queen takes c5, knight d7 doesn't work. That's why black makes the strongest move, queen e6, defending the pawn with the queen. And of course, still bishop c6 check followed. Knight d7. Now Alechen exchanges another pair of minor pieces in order to force the black king to move to d7. He captures on d7 and black cannot capture with the queen, of course, because the e5 pawn falls and after that the rook falls too. So the king must capture on d7, so black loses the right to castle and the black king turns into a target of attack in the center of the board. However, black has opened the rook's way and he's ready to play rook c8 with a tempo. That's why Alechen plays queen a7 check and also targeting the rook. So, for this reason, black king cannot retreat to these squares, as the connection between the rooks would have uh, been broken in this case, and the white queen would simply capture on a b8. So, the black king has only three squares to move. c8, c6, and d6. King c8 loses on the spot. Because of simple bishop d2 vacating the c1 square for the rook and uh, rook uh, c1 check uh, follow, and after the king uh, would move to d8, white would simply capture the rook. And uh, queen uh, d6, for example, which would have defended the rook, doesn't help because of still rook c1 check and after king d8, white has a strong move, bishop b4, attacking the queen, deflecting her. And after that, the rook falls, white is winning. Neither can, after king c8 and bishop d2, uh, instead of uh, queen d6, neither can black play queen b6, defending the rook, hoping to exchange the queens. But again, uh, rook c1 check would follow, and after king d8, bishop a4, pinning and winning the queen. So, king c8 doesn't work. The best move for black would have been king d6. 
So computer recommends this move and shows equality. However, from human perspective, it looks dangerous because the d6 square is a dark square and white has the dark squared bishop. So white might have started a very strong attack on the dark squares, for example, by playing f4 threatening to capture on e5 and after the disappearance of the e5 pawn the d4 pawn would fall under attack besides that after white captures on e5 he will have a deadly move bishop f4 and that would come with great effect and if black tries to hold the e5 pawn by playing f6 white would still capture and after f takes e white has a beautiful move bishop f4 pinning the pawn now the pawn isn't defending the d4 pawn, so white is threatening to capture it again. Computer still shows the equality, but it's uh, very difficult for a human to hold this position. For example, black cannot accept the sacrifice. In this case, he's losing. After queen takes d4 check, no matter where the black king moves, black is losing. For example, after king e7, g7 falls with a check, and after queen f7, for example, Rook d7 check, followed by queen takes f7 check, and the queen is stronger than the rooks, and white also has extra pawn, f4 also falls, so white is winning. Or, uh, if instead of uh, king e7, the king moves to the c file, then again, uh, white simply plays rook c1 check, king b7, queen takes g7 check, king a6, rook a1 check, king b6, queen d4 check, if the king moves to c6, rook a6 check would follow and the queen would be lost. So the king must move to c7, but now the white rook invades the 7th rank with a tempo. If the king moves to c8, the rook would fall. And if rook b7, then a queen g7 check. Black must play queen d7, but again he is losing the queen. So... Uh, king uh, d6 in this position looks dangerous and in order to avoid this possible attack on the dark squares black decided to play king c6 however king c6 is even worse because on c6 the black king is on the open c file and now alehim plays bishop d2 vacating the c1 square for the rook and threatening terrible rook c1 check followed by queen c7 check which would have led to checkmate. So black must do something about it and he makes the best move. In order to challenge the white rook on the c file black finally develops his king's rook, rook c8. So we have reached another critical position. What should white do now? Should he play rook c1 check or not? If not, why? And if not, what is the alternative? You can pause the video and try to find Alehin's brilliant move. So rook c1 check, now that the black rook is on c8, would have been premature because after king d5 it turns out that white doesn't have any checks anymore and white's attack fails so black is ready to exchange the rooks and white wouldn't have the sufficient um, attacking resources to continue uh, the king hunt for this reason as after rook c1 check the black king moves to d5 alehen starts weaving a mating net around the black king. He plays e4, taking the d5 square under control and preventing the black king uh, from uh, moving to d5. Now, rook c1 check threat is deadly because the only square after rook c1 check for the black king would be d6. Again, the same dark square and the bishop would give a deadly check from b4 and the black king would get checkmated. So, rook c1 check is a deadly threat. Of course, after white played uh, e4, black can capture on Passan, but that would be even more terrible because the position would have opened up completely, the d-file would have opened, and as you see, the black king doesn't have 
any squares to move and white for example is threatening deadly queen c5 check and there is nothing black can do about it for example just to illustrate the dangers let's say black makes a random move he doesn't have any defense uh, anyways after queen c5 check king b7 white has a beautiful move so at the moment he cannot give a check on b6 because the black queen controls this square but white can deflect the black queen and after the queen captures queen b6 check followed by checkmate in two moves so after alehin played uh, e4 uh, white cannot a uh, black cannot capture on passan and white is threatening rook c1 check followed by bishop b4 check that's why to prevent bishop b4 check black plays queen b3 taking the b4 square under control but now instead of rook c1 check alehin makes even stronger move he plays rook a1 threatening rook a6 check which would lead to checkmate and rook b6 doesn't help because in this case now that the black rook is on b6 and it's guarded only by the king now rook c1 check is winning because after the king moves the rook falls so after rook a1 in the anticipation of rook a6 check black plays b4 vacating the b5 square for the king Alehian still plays rook a6 check and after king b5 <coughs> rook a5 check follows now if the king moves to c4 uh, the black king gets checkmated in two moves that's why the king moves to uh to c6 instead but still queen c5 check rook a7 check and no matter where the black king moves he would get checkmated next move that's why in this position black resigned and now i recommend watching a game where alehin demonstrates how to use knights in the most effective way but first like this video and subscribe as it's really helpful for the channel growth